What's happening, everybody? I'm back. It's me, your resident supervillain, Mr. J. Washington, and I am here with my review for Season 3, Episode 16 of Black Lightning on the CW. Now, if you have not seen this episode yet, come on back, because it will be spoilers. It is also the season finale. Uh, sorry for the delay, y'all. If you follow me, I always tell you this, the truth. Yo, if you follow me, you know I've been busy. You know I've been trying to get this. I watched the episode, hadn't had time to record the review, so I'm trying to get this out to y'all. There's a lot of stuff I need to put out on this channel, so please forgive me for falling behind. I like how it kicked off exactly where it left off with the fight between Gravedigger and Black Lightning, and we get into the whole, you know, Black Lightning telling Gravedigger they're related, they're family, and, you know, you could tell that Gravedigger is an old black dude calling them kinfolk. I was like... That's the most, most southern thing I think I've ever heard. Oh, yeah, before I go any further, you're probably wondering about the shirt. So check it out. Shouts out to Relish Brand. I keep always telling y'all about Relish Brand clothing. Yo, they hooked me up with this dope Blackhawk shirt in the logo of the Misfits, and I really rock with it. Definitely go check out relishbrand.com. Uh, I highly encourage y'all to watch that. I like also the fact that Gravedigger puts them one and one together and figures out that Lightning is his daughter. He's like, oh, that's Blake, baby Lightning. And that's why you're mad, huh? Like, I dug it. Yo, this episode, the season finale went hard. Now, there have been episodes throughout the season in which we have all been like, huh? What? Why? You know, there have been episodes where you found yourself like, I don't know if I'm following the story. But then there have been episodes you're like, I rock with this. There have been a lot of changes behind the scenes you all are not privy to that unfortunately, well, that fortunately I am. And that I haven't been able to tell you all directly because I don't want to, you know, blow anybody's spot up or, you know, several people. But there are things that have changed storylines, changed episodes and whatnot. And, and I was skeptical on how this whole season would culminate. And, and the reason I bring all that up is because this season finale gave us a lot of oh shit moments. It gave us a lot of moments where you really didn't believe what happened was going to happen. You didn't really expect these things. Like when you see Jamila Olsen doing her clapback news, which she does from her cell phone, recording live in Freeland while the siege is going on, and to watch her get popped by a... Uh, Markovian insurgent like yo to I mean it what it was like the way you would see it happen and then to see the ASA cover it up you know seeing later with uh gray major gray uh commander Williams and Odell like look make sure this video never sees the light of day these are things that have happened in many situations in real life again this entire season I've consistently brought up the fact how a lot of these episodes no matter what they may be tend to mirror and reflect things that actually have gone on in current day society. So seeing that was something that has been talked about with many journalists uh, losing their lives in certain war-torn countries and areas trying to get the story out where other people have not. And so I, I, I like the fact they utilize that. Um, when you see Gravedigger after he kidnaps Lightning, and I love <laughs> the fact that the two of them, they went into this really big diatribe well, not even a diatribe, it's really big dialogue, excuse me, about Martin Luther King, Obama, uh, change. And it was going through history and how the country was made for rich old white men and how it still, in a sense, applies today, which is a true thing. This may be a, been a dialogue, line of dialogue in a superhero show, but this is something that is real. This is something that is factual. You know, a lot of people have argued over, well, America is for all, but America was founded on these principles. But when, in actuality, America was founded on very much racist principles that are meant to sound like it involves everybody, that are meant to seem like it's so open and progressive even for its time back in the 18, 1700s, excuse me. But we know that wasn't the case because of all that was going on in the country during its formation. You know, a progressive and for all country that had slavery. You know, and even throughout history with segregation and a lot of racism that is faced, especially with the black community, because, of course, this is a black family, a black superhero drama. So it's going to focus on that, not saying that it doesn't happen in other communities. It does not happen with other races, but this is what it focuses on. Right. But to see that, I, I really dug that. Also, there's a point where you hear there's a lot of little bitty things. I wonder if a lot of y'all caught like when you hear the uh, Markovian soldiers call 
grave digger over the radio. They call him a uh, Markovian citizen, first citizen grave digger. But also when he says Rangers prepare for glory, my mind instantly went to the movie 300 and was like, Spartans prepare for glory. That's where my mind went automatically. Um, I like, there was so much that happened. There's little tidbits. I took a lot of notes, but I took a lot of tidbits that I was like, yo, I got to talk this. I got to talk that. I got to talk this. When Major Grey goes to Lady Eve and tells her, prepare for your relocation in Gotham, I I wonder, is this a byproduct of crisis? Now, I say that because we've never really referenced, unless I missed it in the first two seasons, we've never referenced Gotham in this show. And so now, to have Gotham referenced not once, but twice, because it's referenced at that moment, and then at the end where the trial is happening, where you know, the subcommittee hearing is happening and, you know, the Pierce family is speaking, which there's something else significant about that I'll get to a little bit later. Um, the way Commander Williams just blows off, pops off Jace, Dr. Jace was like, oh, we're doing this, like shot a dead in a clavicle. Like, I figured Dr. Jace was going to die, but I did not expect it to be at the hands of of commander williams i kind of thought odell might have had a hand in it which in a sense he did i didn't expect brandon to do it which by the way so y'all just put his hair in a ponytail for one episode y'all just was like we gonna man bun it up real quick and then just go back down to the luxurious locks i get he put brand new uh condition in his hair i get he probably used some fruit teas you know what i'm saying it had that luster that bounce that glow it might be pantene pro v but just one Okay, I guess. But again, to see Commander Williams again, it was dope to see um, Christopher B. Duncan back on the episode. I love they brought everyone who was utilized in a significant role throughout this season was culminated in this episode, in the season finale, as it should be. There was nothing left over. There was nothing, no loose ends per se with characters. Do you, you get what I'm saying? There was no, man, I wonder what happened with this person. I wonder what happened with that person. You you see all that. Um, I like the fact how Lala and his crew finally came and helped out, you know, Henderson and the resistance and the Freeland Police Department. Again, Lala was looking like the same pimp from last week. They was like, yo, we're not going to change his pimp uniform. You know what I'm saying? This one from 78 seemed to be working, so we're going to have him shoot some people. And the crazy thing with the Lala character this season is – it's been more Lala the gangster as opposed to Lala Tattoo Man, which at the same time, I understand because there is only so much you can do with both a meta of that ability and visually with his, with his abilities. You know, you have to keep paying to bring in all the cast members, all the uh, cast members, whether they were a co-star, guest star that he has murdered and now are, you know, tattooed on his body. And who's to say that these actors are not doing other things in their careers right now and don't have the time to go back to Black Lightning. Um, I like the campaign. I'm, I've been a big fan of this. The painkiller Khalil fights. The choreography for these have been off the chain. The fact that a Jordan, my homeboy, y'all all know how I rock with Jordan. Like me and him catch up with each other and we clown. But Jordan took this this iteration of the character beyond serious. And it's not saying that he didn't take any other versions of Khalil Payne or of Painkiller serious. Not saying that at all. It's that he stepped his game up with this one the physical shape he got into the duality of roles to play opposite himself it shows a bit of range because you had to show this menacing character in one moment and then show uh, a level of emotion and being broken and and scared at another you know right while you're on the you know on the camera and i get it how it's filmed but i love the way it was conveyed but the fights were dope and the fact that you see khalil win the battle but you don't see him directly win and you wonder how that plays off plays out later and how it pays off excuse me how it pays off later and we get that right uh grave digger making thunder and grace fight i was like Okay, here we go, because a lot of people in the comments from last week all said the same thing I did. What was kind of figuring what was going to happen was that Grace might die. Well, she didn't die. She got the brakes beat off of by Thunder, which 
I, you knew it was going to happen. It, you know, you kind of thought if she was going to kill her, it was going to be that reluctant ass whooping where it does significant damage. And as we saw towards the end of the episode, Grace is now in a coma, which as she should be. And I like the, the breakdown Lynn Gibbs, like, yo, even with her shape shifting DNA, there's no telling how this coma will affect her. Perfect. Um, I was sad to see Henderson go. You know, earlier it was reported in the season that this was going to be Damon Gupton's last season, who plays Inspector Chief Henderson, and um, it was very sad to see it. And but I got so many Forrest Gump feels from this. Got this big ass hole in his chest, and, and you got Henderson on the ground like, "Get me out of here, Black Lady!" Like, uh, I can't. Uh, you got a hole in your chest. It was almost like the whole Forrest. What happened? And for us going, you got shot. That's literally how I took the two of them. Uh, I like the fact we ended the season finale like we did the end of season finale one. Uh, the season finale of the first season, excuse me. Lynn with her shotgun. That She's 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 surgical. The way she shot Gravedig in the bag during his final fight with Jefferson uh, to hit him with the anti-meta booster. It was dope. Um, when he shot her, though, did anyone pay attention to the fact that Gravedigger told Lynn, you should have gone for the head? Again, I, I think it's just little small jabs on there. Not even jabs. Little certain quips that reference you to other comic book properties and different situations that you like, oh, I know where this could have came from. And granted, it could have been uh, just simply coincidental. It could have been just a, you know, let's just see what this line sounds like. And nobody probably think, oh, man. Avengers in Infinity War when Thor threw Stormbreak at Thanos and Thanos had, had it in Thanos' chest and Thanos said you should have gone for the head and then snap. That's the instant where my brain goes to. Um, I also dig how Khalil tracks down Odell and is in the car with him and Odell is trying to shut him down with the keywords and you find out that it's not Painkiller, it's actually Khalil and that he was like, yo, that only works for Painkiller. My name's Khalil, I don't think we've been properly introduced. And you have Black Lightning trying to calm him down and like, yo, he don't deserve to take a bullet to the head. Like, let him suffer and blah, blah, blah. And so Khalil was like, he says nothing and just starts letting off shots and tells Black Lightning, look, I shot him in the spleen. It'd be good unless he has internal bleeding or an infection. Then it's God's will. And just walked off. I thought that was so dope because it's it's not painkiller. It's I'm going to, you know, like you said, you made me kill my own mother. Like, yo, you deserve to suffer. I'm not going to be this monster that you created. But if you go, I'm just going to do the bare minimum. I know exactly what it hits you. Here's the bare minimum. If you don't make it, not under my control anymore. And I, I really like that. Gamby taking out the last of the ASA who knew the peer secrets, which is, again, this is smart writing in this one. This is very smart because, again, no real loose ends because, you know, we know this whole thing. How does it how does this whole closure thing with the Pierce family and the ASA go? How does, you know, the ASA will eventually be shut down? We knew this was going to come. But the fact you take out everybody left, everybody left that knows the Pierce family secrets. So now it goes back to being just the outsiders and Gamby who only know who the Pierce family are. And I, I dug that uh, Tobias. He goes home. And like, yo, you see him talking to his brother and he tells his brother, you know, well, you didn't realize it was his brother at first. And he was like, um, is my mom OK? He's like, your mama's fine. He's like, what about my daddy? And dude was like, well, your daddy basically dead. And you realize that that's his actual brother and that he's home with his actual mama watching the news, eating some home cooking. I was like, that's a real villain, a real villain who escapes and then is going home. And a mama who's like, you steal my child. I, I rocked with that. Um, towards the end of the episode where we pretty much are in this breakdown, again, Gotham City is back. Lynn is giving her deposition. She's being debriefed and everything by the, the committee, and she's still taking glimmer. So I think we're still going to tackle that, you know, because she hasn't been redeemed. She hasn't been rehabbed. She just had to try to stop. And, of course, you see, you kept seeing she had these moments. And she gave herself that booster, which allowed her to basically kill Commander Williams, which she didn't want to talk about to Jeff. You know, and so, which I was kind of weirded out by a little bit because Commander Williams was like, I'm not a meta. And I could have sworn we saw him earlier when he fought Black Lightning. You knew he was a meta. So I was like, wait, what? 
I didn't I didn't get it. I thought he was like an Uncle Tom meta who was a meta, but didn't like being, you know what I'm saying, didn't rock with other metas. He was like a house meta instead of a house Negro. I kind of thought that, but maybe I missed something. I got to rewatch the episodes of the season. But this is what I really wanted to bring up that was so dope. When you watch, after you see Black Lightning, Thunder, and Lightning again give their depositions to the committee, and they talk and everything, you see the main judge in the middle say, Judge Isabella and Judge Von Eden. Why that is so significant, and I need everyone to pay attention, and it is so dope they did this. Those are the actual creators of Black Lightning. Judge Isabella is Tony Isabella, and Judge is, uh, yeah, Trevor Isabella, excuse me, and Tony Von Eden. Those, or is it Trevor Von Eden or Tony Isabella? One of the two. I, my brain is, it's early in the morning as I'm recording this, y'all. It really is early. But those two are the men who created Black Lightning. And you see their names credited in the opening credits every single episode. But to see them physically to close out the season was so dope. I think I love the, yeah, we're doing a comic book show. We give credit to the creators in the opening credits. Uh, but we also are going to allow them to be in the show. We're going to have them in the show. Similar to how the Crisis on Infinite Earth series had its one of its creators, Marv Wolfman, on there. Marv Wolfman on there. So this was so dope for me. I, I, I really liked this season finale because it wrapped up this story. It, it, it closed off this entire arc that we saw throughout the, the season. And it still opens up the door for things to come in season four, which we know will be happening. Uh, where exactly does it go? Yeah, we go back to Black Lightning versus Tobias Well, which is, I have no problem with that. That's where it should be. Because now we're going to have Tobias pretty much stalking Lynn from the way he was talking. Um, Lala is still a factor. If Lady, Lady Eve actually survived, again, she's supposed to be going to Gotham City. So who knows what we'll see as regards to that, because now we're living in a post-crisis Freeland. Um painkiller now he's on his own i know there are some plans for the character i can't divulge yet but these are things that are going to happen and i i just i i really want the best for this show four seasons for this type of show is a lot and it is a great thing to watch happen um this is one of those shows where i understand a lot of people may not get it because it's not or get into it because it's not action bang bang shoot them up blast blast power power off the gate it is a drama it is a superhero it is a family drama that's that centers around a family of superheroes a drama that centers around a family of superheroes and i can understand why some people don't directly rock with it i i get it i get it however i think we need to give this show a shot. Listen, if you stuck around through seasons three and four of Arrow with no problem like I did, you can give Black Lightning a shot. If you got through the first season of Legends of Tomorrow, you can give Air Black Lightning a shot. If you've rocked with Batwoman, you can give Black Lightning a shot. If you stuck around through the first two seasons of Supergirl and even maybe season three of The Flash, all of these shows have had their seasons where you've been like, people have been like, I don't know if I still want to rock with this, but guess what? Their their viewership, their 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 fan base, their following, the loyalty has remained. And I think for those of you watching this, those who may not have been back on after season two on the you know the train with Black Light, I think everyone needs to give it a shot. Now I know it does come off as me being a hype train for Black Lightning because of my connections with the show. And that is a bit of it. It is a bit, a small bit biased. I'll be lying if I didn't say it was. It wasn't. But at the same time, I give this show the benefit of the doubt because I know what it is. It is something different. We allowed a drama, per se, to go on with The Gifted. Granted, it got canceled, but that was with the whole change of Fox, Disney, things like that. And it was a drama. Legion was a, for lack of better words, a mind fuck. And many people had to actually sit and watch Legion. And when I say watch, you had to pay, you had to pay real close attention to Legion. There are different shows, Jessica Jones, their shows, different places. Swamp Thing was gonna be Swamp Thing, it was trash. Jessica Jones is one that was, it was a drama that it was a real drama that had superpower elements mixed in. And I use all of these different shows to say Black Lightning falls under that umbrella. And I'm not saying that because you're black, you have to watch it and support it. It helps. 
It helps. Why? Because we as black people, for those who are not black, and I'm not going to go people of color, all that. those who are not black, a lot of us will go, well, we don't have this representation on TV. We don't have this representation on film. We have it. And at the same time, it is not that we have to accept anything. I know that because, again, check out my fall from grace review. You'll know for a fact. I'm like, I'm not accepting any and everything. But we have to support it and see where it's going. You can't watch one or two episodes and be like, I'm done with it because that doesn't give anything a shot. You have to see where the story goes. Now, some people may be able to follow it. Some people may not. It all varies. It really is a variance, but it's all up to you. But at the end of the day, I want to know what you thought about this episode, this season finale in those comments below. So go ahead and like, subscribe, click on the notification bell. Did it end the way you wanted it to end? Did you want some other things to happen differently? Are you excited for it? Are you looking forward to season four? Are you probably not? I want to know your thoughts. All right. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Mr. J Washington. M-R-J-A-Y. You should know how to spell Washington. Make sure you join my supervillain squad on Patreon. If you want to show me some love and some support, Patreon is how you do it, man. What that Patreon has done, if you tell, I keep trying to update stuff and I upgrade the production value from lights, cameras, microphones, everything to make sure this is better for you all because I know that if I want to put something out here, I want to put out the best thing possible. And so that support goes a long, long way way all right check out the mad titan podcast everywhere you get your podcast listen on i get you caught up in all the things happening in the marvel and dc live action and cinematic universes is a barbershop talk for nerds episode 53 will be coming soon like i said i've been busy so much and i've been meaning to get the podcast out i know it sounds like excuses and i apologize for that but i want to make sure you guys get that and uh check out relish brand please do man check out they're from the crib they're from chicago this shirt you might have seen my chicago style shirt with the lion from the artist to the chicago so much more check that out also check out blurds in the hood t-h-e b-l-e-r-d-s the letter n t-h-e h-o-o-o-d on youtube check out that youtube channel myself and winston a marshall we got a dope show we do every week we've decided we're going to do it live weekly and what we do is we talk pop, talk pop culture news entertainment nerd stuff and a whole lot of off the rail shit so make sure you subscribe to that all right i will holler at you guys later thank you for rocking with me throughout this entire season i appreciate you all so much please subscribe to the channel make sure you stay with me for everything else i'm about to drop all right take care i'm out of here thank y'all bye